Where you at? No jumper. Sports. Kiki, Professor X, Josh, we're in the building. This motherfucking recap number two in this lit. Let's go. What's up, my boy? What's going on, dude? Man, I'm just kicking back, being cool, my boy. You know how wow. I do it, man. You know how I do it, man. What so, a day, man. We've had a day. We are filming now. We're going to do a little bit of uh, time travel here, but we're filming now. We've just ran through a couple of interviews, got those stripes up. Kiki, you killed it. Without your help, I would have been on the side <laughs> like, man, help, man, help. Nah, you were great. Those were... Uh, Appreciate you. You want to tell the people who we got coming on today? Oh, my gosh. Darren Collison, man. Legend. Oh, my gosh. King of the IE. So, everybody, round of applause. Round of applause for Darren Collison, man. We made it happen, man. We made it happen. <laughs> Thank you, No Jumper. Let's start it off like that. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Adam22. Hey. Thank you, little bro, for bringing me around because without any of you, this would not be possible. So, let's get into the DC interview. Matter of fact... It's like, they're going to have to wait. They're going to have to wait a little you know bit I mean? before we get into that one. It's like, it's like when the Jays come out. Y'all just got to wait in line. And you, man, you order up. We got to chill for a second. Yeah. That being said, I got a pizza on the way. You guys got to keep an eye out on that. What? Oh, man. Josh is really proud of me, man. He didn't order me some za. It's, it's a pizza party. It's a pizza party. Shout out to the pasta gang, because if you're not part of the pasta gang, you ain't playing. Mm -mm. You feel what I'm saying? So how'd you like the interview first off? That was my first interview, one that I sat in on. So let's hear about it. I definitely need to get my stripes. Up. I, was, I was a little bit of a supporter in this one. I sat back, I listened. You did a really good job getting the story across. There was a few things I wanted to add in there. Darren was really cool. Yeah. He was really laid back. Yeah. Um, very chill. Mm -hmm. Like really chill. So really it was like chill. I didn't want to dig too hard into him. Like pause. Yeah, press it. Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. See, this is how y'all know I don't be playing that shit. Yeah, you're going to pretend you don't know where the button is. I don't know where like it you is. Don't hold on. Slam it every said, time. Hold on, mm -hmm. man. God damn, I don't even know where you You lucky, bro. But I'm going to just take a guess. Oh, I'll just play this one. Yeah, That's some white shit. shit. There you I'll go. Play that one. That's a good one. Yeah, I don't, don't want to make you, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's some white shit. That's some white shit. But go ahead, though. No, that was a dope interview. Um, you did a great job asking those questions. I mean, we'll get into that in a second. Yeah. But, uh, you know, getting to talk to an NBA player, getting to talk yeah. to somebody who went through, you know, playing at UCLA. Like, playing, like growing up around here, making it, playing for the Clippers, just mm -hmm. like seeing that whole progression. Like, great interview. You guys, tune in. Make sure you stick around and watch that. Give us the thumbs up. Hit us with the like and hit us with a comment, man. Because honestly, I appreciate you saying that, but I honestly think you did good, though. Eh. No, nah, you got to understand. Eh. We play we play parts, bro. Yeah, we we yeah, play yeah. our part. We play our part. I definitely have more learning to do. Because, no, nah, remember what you told me when I, when I first asked you, you said, Kiki, I don't want to mess this up, so I'm going to just, we going to roll. You feel what I'm saying? And that's mm -hmm. what we're going to do, bro. Everything ain't going to come out perfect in the beginning. We got this. You know Appreciate it. That. You know it. We got this. It ain't nothing. These niggas better be ready for us anyway. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So I want to talk about one thing that I've seen, man. Isaiah that. Thomas, bro. He made okay. some type of like comment about LeBron is the GOAT. Now, we all know LeBron James is my favorite player. So he said when all things are said and done, when LeBron's career is over, He'll be like the statistical leader in like the five categories that matter most, and he'll be the undisputed goat. Mm -hmm. This was Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas, who Detroit Pistons legend who point guard, also happens to be the number one nemesis of Michael Jordan. So that's why I feel like this comment means nothing. I've, I'm, I'm not even going to lie to you, man. This feels like bait. I'm going to agree mm -hmm. on two aspects because I'm a LeBron fan, but he's not the GOAT. I'm sorry. I used to feel that way, and out of um, 
out of argument. You feel what I'm saying? Just exactly. because people was talking shit about him. And it's just like, bro, he's my favorite player. Y'all ain't about to be talking shit about him. Look at him, bro. Can't nobody guard him. He's faster than everybody on the damn court. And he's huge. Mm -hmm. Like, that's some hater shit. It's like short man's complex. That if you don't like LeBron, you got short man complex, man. Interesting. So my thing is. I feel a little triggered with that, but okay. Don't be. Don't be, my brother. You feel what I'm saying? All so right. look. <laughs> I feel a little triggered. I feel like. Without even. It's no look in the don't. Oh, <laughs> go, oh my God. I shouldn't even say that. No, look, I'll, yeah. mess with I'll you, get man. you next time. <laughs> no man it's some some shit is about to go down that i do not want to be a part of but this is my friend so i'm gonna let him press the button go ahead press it no god please no yes he fucked up <laughs> i ain't gonna do it now so on the other right. aspect is that like isaiah like thomas man like you can't be out here talking like that because you really don't like Michael Jordan, fam. So you're coming from a, a place where you're hating and you're being spiteful. You feel what I'm saying? Because all because this one guy in your generation was the GOAT. The GOAT. Like G-O-A-T. Not of like, that generation, period. Period. Right, like you get what, I, no, I no, no, sure we all no, 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 no. I'm agree agreeing all right. with That's why I said it's two agreements that I, I got to get on because... LeBron has he doesn't have those rings. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm agree with you on one on another one too that you say mm -hmm. about the GM shit. Okay. Jordan didn't orchestrate that that roster that he had. You feel what I'm saying? So he landed, he he used the chips that he was dealt. He mm -hmm. used the cars that he was dealt. And he turned all of them into some hungry, eager people to fucking get that ring with him. Yep. So shout out to Jordan. That's what makes you a GOAT. You feel what I'm saying? Back to back, being sick, sick games. I remember it was times I was watching Jordan was fucking sick, damn near in tears. Yep. Out there still playing. You feel what I'm saying? And it ain't no I'm hurt. Oh, shit, my ankle hurt. Uh, nothing against you, Brian, but I'm going with the characteristics that makes you a GOAT. Straight up. <clears throat> making your teammates better. That's mm -hmm. making you a GOAT. You feel what I'm saying? Staying. Uh, I'm biting the bullet. Mm -hmm. Staying with a team and making them better. That's creating a family. That's what a GOAT will do. He stayed with Phil Jackson, man. Hit the horns for me because I'm giving it up to y'all right now. I'm showing y'all the GOAT characteristics. So. So LeBron's not the GOAT. I'm glad we can accomplish that in episode two here. Mm -hmm. We can move on past this conversation. <laughs> but, Sorry, LeBron. So. What do you think? Do you think LeBron, he's not the GOAT. He's a top all time, right? He's the GOAT of his generation. Do you think That's he's my the, opinion. Do you think he's a Laker GOAT? No. Isn't that crazy? Not, he's not, not he's even not the a, Laker GOAT. No, you can't even disrespect Kobe Bryant. Kobe, or Shaq, Magic, like, Shaq. You can't do Nick. Like, There's a I lot can name of so many here people from the Lakers that you can't do that. a long time. So. Yeah. It's only that puts him pretty far down on the list, then, right? That's not far, acknowledge. not far. He's okay. top five for sure. Okay. He ain't far down. It's only um, we got Magic, we got Kareem, we got Kobe, we got um, who? I think I just said one before that, but I'm gonna go with Jerry West, and then I would say uh, it's out of. I can't, that's hard because you got James Worthy. Mm -hmm. so, but me personally, LeBron is that fifth. He's over James Worthy. Is LeBron going to have a bronze statue outside the crypto center? Duh. It's LeBron James. Come on now. They got to, like, come on, bro. Yes. You have to, like. So you think he's going to be back after this year? I think he has, like, an extension that is up this season. Hmm. You think he's going to stick around? Yeah. I think he's going to stick or around because watch. I think he want to play uh, on the same court as his son. I do, too, but why would it be here? Not saying like they're on the same team, but mm -hmm. like I be I think that he wants to see that. Yeah, but do you see LeBron potentially leaving here to go play somewhere else, mm -hmm. and maybe even somewhere else after that when his son's drafted? He's a businessman, so yes, I do see that. All I right. mean, he showed us that before. I mean, he did his job already in my eyes. He brought us a ring. Thank you. I mean, a ring with an asterisk, but a thank, ring. Thank you. Yep. 
I wish I was a on bubble the team. ring. Thank you. A little wish. bubble on top of it. Thank you. I wish we had a parade. <laughs> so yeah, what you got for me, man? What's up? Ah, oh, I don't know, man. Today's a busy day. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of shit after this. We got a busy day tomorrow. Ooh, we got another fire interview. I'm not going to tell you who it is. We got that coming up tomorrow, which I just remembered too. Wow. We got some heat dropping on. Wow. Heat. Like shit you wow. weren't ready for. But. No lookers. Ah. Give it to him. I think now's a good time. Let's jump into the interview. The king of Cali is like what I like to call him. Darren Collison is in the building. Appreciate it. You know how we do it, man. Yep. How you doing, brother? I can't complain. You that's right. Yeah. That's right. Josh, yeah. how you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm coming off hot off our last episode. I'm ready to do more of these sports uh, segments. Mm -hmm. I'm pumped to have uh, Mr. California, you called Hello, him? Hello, King. Yeah. Yeah. King. You got to put the King, king there, of California you gotta, here. You got to put some sports. I'm excited to be on here talking to some cool ass dudes that Kiki told me you yeah. got to link up with right away. So yeah. that's what's happy to have man. you on, man. Appreciate it, man. Thanks Hell for having yeah. me. Hell yeah. You already know, man. You know how we do it, bro. Cali. That's Cali love. So for the people that don't know, this is Darren Collison, superstar in the NBA. He's from Cali. That's why I call him a Cali King. Etiwanda Rancho Cucamonga, bro. Know. That's know. fire. Tell you me about know. growing up in Rancho. Man, I, I got out there probably at the age of, um, I'll say like eight or nine. Okay. In the Empire. It was like really not much out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like a lot of land, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's it's built up now. It's a lot of industry buildings. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? A lot of hoopers out there. It wasn't like that before. It mm -hmm. wasn't that many hoopers, you know, making it big from that area. Nice area. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, next to Fontana. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Where most of my friends, you know, that I kind of hung out with, that went to the same school. So it was, it was a dope little Who, atmosphere myself. Who'd you go to school with out there? Um, Jeff Ayers. Mm -hmm. He he went to the NBA. I think he played for like I think like eight, nine years in the NBA. Fire. Um, David Carter, you know, he was like a big Division One basketball player. Mm -hmm. Your man Rashad. Oh my God, he brings <laughs> yeah, up your guy. Oh yeah. my God, no hell no. That's your but boy. You, but you know what? Like I I was I played with Rashad like since we were like first, second, third grade. Oh, so like, okay, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, so that's why he, he came over. You know oh, what I mean? So they all, you, you pulled a GM move. <laughs> no, I, I didn't expect him to come. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, when okay. I heard he was coming, then, you know. Yeah, Rashard Austin, <laughs> you left. We appreciate you coming to Dominguez, bro, because, you know, not like that. You put a battery in my back, bro. Pause. You feel what I'm saying? But <laughs> thank God you left and went to Etiwanda. You feel me? But come on, man. Don't, I don't like when players be coming to do that. Come over in the summer. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Coming to take a nigga's spot and then dip. Yeah. Like, he had me worried, bro. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. I mean, it, it was better for you, though. It, well, it sure did work out better for me. <laughs> I'll tell you that much, man. Yeah. But shout Wait, out to so Rashad Austin. You know what I mean? You guys play against each other? Yeah, we did. We had one. Well, me, I remember one game we played against each other. Oh, okay. We yeah. got to talk about that then. I mean, shit. We won. Look at him. You, he won the <laughs> ultimate game. Like, <laughs> shit. You know what what I'm do saying? you remember about playing against him at that point? Um, was that, hold on, was was that during the summer or was that like actually like a. a I don't think it was like a like an actual season game or nothing, playoffs or nothing like that. Was that was a summer? summer game, yeah. Hope think, International yeah, University. Yeah. But um, that shit was super dope for me, bro, because uh, I played for Linwood first. My ninth grade year, I played at Linwood High. Oh, wait, hold on. Did you did you play with Burnley? Yeah. Okay, Brandon yeah, Watson. I remember. So Brandon Jennings was on your team. Brandon Jennings okay, was yeah, on I my team. Now. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I remember. Uh, Brandon yeah. Jennings was on my team. Yeah. yeah, man. Pretty cool dude, man. Shout out to him for making it, though. Tough crowd. Bring us some jackets. Bring us some merch, man. For we sure. could do it. But yeah, so Linwood was there, bro, and I had just transferred from Linwood. Uh -huh. So I was the trader at this time. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? And we playing against you guys, which was like next to modern day us, sure. poly yeah, yeah. like we was them guys you feel what i'm saying yeah. like top five schools he was with one of them for sure for sure so we sitting there we balling i'm at the free throw line bro and i'm sitting there and i'm like you know what these <laughs> niggas is calling me a traitor they hate uh, me <laughs> we playing against darren collison dude about to go to ucla Rashad Austin is here. I got to show him. Yeah, you, thank God you left, but I'm about to go off on you. So 
It was just so much going on in that moment, bro. I was like, fuck that. I'm about to ball out, bro. Sure. About to ball out. And that was one of the best games I ever had at that time in my life because I was a knucklehead, though. You feel what I'm saying? I was into the streets, out of the streets. I was you kind of double dutching with shit. So. Yeah. But I recall that game, man. My boy Quentin Watkins, he went baseline, damn near like rocked the cradle. You see, we was kind of we was we was happy, bro. We won, but it was only because we knew you was going somewhere. We really oh, wasn't. It was, oh, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. We hearing, played like, extra harder because we was like, man, this nigga in the water, man. We play these <laughs> niggas tonight, man. This nigga Darren don't never talk to nobody. He man. just come in with his bag of shit, and headphones, all ready to just. Man, hoop. It, it's so crazy because like the inland. I feel like the inland LA cats always had this like inner beef. You know what it I mean? was like, mandatory. Like we felt like we was never respected from you guys, and y'all, y'all obviously felt like we was privileged and all that. You know what I mean? That's that's was that like what we got. That's it was, the vibe it wasn't that, we that. Got. It was this is what we felt like. It was just like man, they don't talk to us. Mm. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? We all had our whole little inner circle, bro. Like yeah. the Dominguez dude. We'll we're, we're kick it with the Jordan cats, like yeah. Long Beach Jordan. You feel what I'm saying? We'll go to uh, Mayfair and go kick it with Lakewood High. Yeah. But it's just like, shit, the IE is like, nobody was kicking. Wasn't Drew Holiday out there too? Yeah, Drew was out there, but he actually went to, um, I think he went to Campbell Hall. He, he was okay. going to school in the inland in junior high, but he went to Campbell Hall. Okay. But it's funny you say that because, you know, for me, personally like people didn't know like i spent a lot of time in the inner city hooping mm. like my mom would drive me down there during the weekends hooping in the inner city mm -hmm. so like you know brandon jennings james harden mm -hmm. you know russ damar all those cats you know what i mean like i spent a lot of time hooping down there in those tournaments yeah so i just happened to go to school out there in mm -hmm. the inland so like when we played against you guys like brian harvey like yeah. i was already familiar with you know who we were playing That's against fire. so it was cool for me you know what yeah. I mean? just like gravitate to that experience shout out to brian harvey too because yes, he, uh, he did his thing too yeah, he man. was called one of the best players i ever played yeah, with in my called, life man for sure for sure for sure that's all good but yeah job. i mean you talked about at that point you already knew you were going to ucla mm -hmm. what was that decision like like why did you decide you know were you recruited heavy there uh did you want to stay close to home like what was the decision in going there i i really wasn't recruited heavy like that oh really? mm -hmm. yeah like i was like a late you know, Bloomer coming out of high school. You know what I mean. I think, I think San Diego State before I committed to UCLA was like my only offer at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember just telling my parents, I was like, you know what, man, San Diego State is like the only school to offer me. Like I'm gonna go and just commit there. So we went on campus. You know, I loved it. You know what I'm saying. Um, came back. You know, I told my mom, I was like, I'm going to San Diego State. You know what I'm saying. Mm. We had a tournament the following weekend, mm -hmm. and UCLA happened to show up. Um, play really well, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then they so came. They, so they're in the crowd watching you. They're in the crowd. I had, like, I had one of my best games ever in high school. Fire. You know what I'm saying? And then they told, you know, my people that, you know, they were going to offer me. Mm. At that time, I think Jordan Farmer was going there. I was about to say. Yeah, he, you know, Jordan Farmer was cold too. So, yeah. like, you know what I mean? I wasn't sure, like, you know, if I go there, if I was going to get a chance to, like, play or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, you know, for me personally, I wasn't thinking about the NBA. I was thinking, man, just the experience to go to UCLA. Like, who right. don't want to go to UCLA? Right. You know, coming right. from Southern California, right? So, right. Be a know. Bruin, bro. Yeah. So, on that aspect of UCLA, bro, please let us know who your roster was. I would love to for these viewers to know who you play ball with in college. Man, Key, we had we had a great you know set of guys you know to hoop with that was like competitive. You know, you talk about like Aaron Afalo. Who you mentioned from Compton, you know, Drew Holiday, you know, like we talked about. Um, I'm sorry, bro. You can keep going, but yeah. man, these are hitters. Russ, you know what I mean? Kevin Love. Russell Westbrook when yeah. he says Russ. Yeah, we had, we had, man, we were just fortunate, but like at the time, nobody knew who we were because mm -hmm. a lot of us wasn't recruited highly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like Aaron made a name for himself mm -hmm. at UCLA, Russ made a name for himself at UCLA. You know, Drew Holiday was probably the only player that I could think of that was like highly recruited, him and Kevin Love. But mm -hmm. like for the most of us, we wasn't highly recruited like that. So nobody knew about us until we got to UCLA. Mm -hmm. So we kind of had to prove our worth there. That's so fire, bro. Yeah. Like, especially majority of y'all being from here too. For sure. That's fire, bro. Like what I watched the other night, y'all had Josh Ship too. Josh Ship, I, man, I'm bro. So, man, listen. 
I watched I, the buzzer beater. I seen that. I was like, bro, that was man. like that Kobe shit over behind the backboard. I'm like, wait. People don't people don't understand. Out of all the players that I just named, like I know I was we went mm-hmm. on to the NBA, but Josh mm-hmm. Ship should have been an NBA player. Like he was probably the Shit. coldest Easy. player at, at that school, like easily. You know, like yeah. practice once, like he's winning. Like Josh Shit was so cold, man. Man, for real. And he had a family behind him too, because yeah. his, his brothers played and all of that. So for sure. That's super fire, man. Yeah. Like how how is that, bro? Hearing that crowd like that, the college crowd, because the college crowd is different from the NBA crowd. Yeah, for sure. How is that? At UCLA, it was cool. You know what I mean? Like, but I think you start to experience more of the college crowd when you get on the road. Like mm-hmm. when you playing against like the Stanfords or even going to USC. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? When they talking crazy about your yeah. background and all this <laughs> other stuff, bringing yeah. up stuff, man. You didn't even think they knew about. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But. You, you really start to notice the crowd on the road. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. At UCLA, like, they were, like, real respectful. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the student section was dope, but mm-hmm. it wasn't like it was on the road. That's what's up. Did you do any partying up there? Did you, like, was you into parties while you was up there at school? My first year, yeah. Turned up. Yeah. I mean, because it's like you you just trying to get the whole college experience when you first get there, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? you just trying to stay in the moment right. you know what i mean right you know and you just this wide-eyed freshman you know mm-hmm. we don't know what to expect you know what i mean mm-hmm. and, give me one of those stories bro one of them party stories in college that you remember man there's so many um <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know if i could say on air but um, hey <laughs> no let's go to the next party man. go to the no, we're gonna, we're gonna skip that one let's go to yeah, the next nah, one. nah it was uh yeah it was uh just know it was a it was guess a what time. i'm talking <laughs> hey ucla shout out to ucla <laughs> <laughs> My boy said, hey, man, it's going down. I ain't going to San Diego, mama. I'm going to be a Bruin. For sure. You know what's going sure. down, man. So, I mean, sure. you talked about all those guys coming to UCLA and not necessarily being recruited and uh, really, like, getting big. Is that, do you think coaching had a lot to do with that? Do you think it was you guys just all coming together at the same time? Like, what do you think really made, you know, elevated you guys from not being heavily recruited man. to, like, these all, you know, all of you guys made the NBA. All of you guys were, yeah. you know, so it was, all-stars at it certain was, points. It was literally a little bit of everything. Yeah. You know, when you got a burden on your shoulder when nobody knows about you and you trying to make it to the NBA, you're going to do whatever it takes, you mm-hmm. know, on the court to, you know, to just to get noticed or seen. Mm-hmm. And for us, the only way we felt like we was going to get respect is if we win. You know what right. I'm saying? So we kind of needed each other. But it just so happened that everybody, you know, on that team, you know, had a chip. You know what I'm saying? So we just had this crazy run at UCLA, but we were just going off of fire. You know what I mean? And we were, I don't think we were thinking about the NBA so much. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We were just, it's almost like we were just mad. You know what I'm saying? Like we didn't get the respect and love that, you know, that we felt like we deserved. You know what I'm saying? So we went out there on the court. We kind of did what we did and kind of come together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Russ has always kind of played with that chip for on sure. the shoulder, for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I was going to say, if you look at that roster, bro, that, that college roster he was on, all of them is like that. Yeah. Every single one of them. Yeah. From K-Love, like, you could see when he was playing in college, bro, he was, like, literally focused. Like, these yeah. dudes was locked in, bro. Yeah. Locked in. Poly Pavilion, though, I played there once, We and then we watched LeBron play there, too. Okay. That's the first time I ever That's seen That's when, uh, when he played, uh, was it the high school game? Yeah. Westchester? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yes, bro, I seen that dude. Man, that was crazy. Craziest shit I ever seen in my life. Man, if crazy. People don't know, like, this is how I knew LeBron was going to be great, because, mm-hmm. you know, Westchester was, like, the most dominant school bro, out I mean, here in Southern California. Amir Johnson. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, like, I mean, I, great I, players, Hassan, like you can name it, saying. you know what I'm saying? And then LeBron just like literally outscored him by like, himself. By <laughs> <laughs> That's how hey, I was like, and what was, this, this, what this, was this, so this dope? Different. Man, his mom was walking back and forth the whole game, just big popping it. She had an airbrush right. t-shirt on a LeBron. And what i never like forget, bro, they came out to do the warm-ups, right? So at this point, LeBron, all eyes is on LeBron. He's like this fucking Duncan King. So he's out there doing layups. Yeah. Everybody in the crowd it's is crazy. booing him. They're booing him. Like, boo, we don't want to see no layups. Boo this man. Mm-hmm. Bro, he took off. He did a layup again. So you know how you go across to start to be the passer? Yeah. Bro, he turned around, and they threw him a lob. Easy. <sighs> Plus, Easy ran like he was about to get back in line turned around again they just stopped the layup drills 
for him to just put make a movie, Man. bro. And when I say, Special. bro, it was the best thing about basketball I ever seen in my life. I said, oh my God, this dude is going to be the Man. shit. Man, never capture, seen that capture. We, we, we never gonna see a player like LeBron in a minute. So yeah. like, I you know I got a chance to play with him. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? When I you know the short snail with the Lakers, but mm -hmm. just watching his every move, mm -hmm. it's like he's just so above water. You know, it's compared to everybody else in terms of his mental preparation. That's right. But what yeah. do you think about LeBron James? You told me I couldn't talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, I had to tell my boy, man. Don't, <laughs> hey, don't be talking bad about LeBron, man. We, yeah. we, you know what I mean, man. No, we, I think he's one of the most dominant athletes of his time, for sure. Come on, LeBron. Yeah. He he got his act together, man. He <laughs> good. No, I mean, anyway. <laughs> MJ did seem to get a pretty big ovation this past weekend during the All Star game that overshadowed LeBron's right. whole. Kind of, it was so cool. This it's, dude cool. Is it's cool. Funny, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, oh, man. This it's dude cool. is yeah. max funny, bro. Speak, speaking of that, what's up? Who was one of your favorite players growing up? Like, give us My, a few of them. Um, obviously MJ, but for me, I always like the like players that I can relate to. Mm -hmm. Allen Iverson, mm -hmm. short. You know, quick. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, can get to the paint, score at will. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Baron Davis, of course. You know what I mean? Oh, like oh. He, Baron Davis, like really took care of me. You know, when I was younger. You know, what oh, I'm that's saying? fine. So I gave him, I give him a lot of credit. Tell you us know, about that right quick. Yeah, I want to know about that. Yeah, I, I mean, know, I didn't know nothing about that. Yeah, like I, Baron kind of was like our, like everybody's mentor. Like when I mentioned, like you know, James Harden, Brandon mm -hmm. Jennings, uh, Bobby Brown, mm -hmm. like. We, he used to have like these small camps, mm. you know what I'm saying? And, like after the camps, we got chance, we got a chance to like hang out with Baron Davis, and like being in high school, hanging out with an NBA player, that's huge. That right? is major. Mm -hmm. I'm over yeah, here that, jelly my damn self. Where yeah, was this that, tournament <laughs> league at? Where was y'all at? God man, damn. I, I barely got a chance to go with myself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, he 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 was just a good mentor. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And we kind of needed that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I felt like. He kind of homegrown a lot of us players like from Southern California who we are right now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because he kind of bridged that gap. Because you know, you know, not, I, to me it wasn't that many players from LA or Southern Cal or whatever mm -hmm. Inland Empire at that making it to the NBA. So just seeing him and having that visualization of somebody that was so close to the NBA and just touching him like that's, it's like wow, like that's, you that's know, it's dope, possible. Bro. That's super dope because. You could tell he sprinkled off a little bit on you because you do that same sort with giving back to For people. sure. For you sure. It's saying? big, man. That's it's fire, bro. Yeah, it's I didn't, huge. You saying that, I didn't even think that I was going to come up with man, that, but I see that. I it's see huge that. because a lot of people don't realize that, like, you know, it's, it's one thing to work on your game. It's one thing to go back to your respectable high school team and hoop. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing when you get a chance to, like, hang out or talk to an NBA player who's made it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just to mm -hmm. see how they act. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just getting tools for them mm -hmm. uh, you know i feel like more of us need to come back mm -hmm. and try to do the same thing for community because that's how you build like that community up. Like, that's how you get the report yeah you know what i'm saying so you have to and then when you like like you said man just just knowing somebody is like super respected in the for nba sure. and it's just like damn bro he want to hang out with me yeah like he want to help me with my game and for my sure. mental. It, it like, does so much for you. Oh my yeah, gosh, it, it makes you walk different. Yeah, it does. And, and at that time, like there was nobody from the inland who I can like that. I'm sure there was guys that made it to the NBA. Not that I can remember. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That I can like call or talk to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? When I'm working out in the inland, like mm -hmm. in high school. Oh, you know what I'm okay, saying? okay. So okay. like Baron, he had most of like the LA players. I just mm -hmm. so happened to go to a camp, and then we kind of mm -hmm. bonded from there. And then, of course, he went to UCLA, mm -hmm. but like. I didn't get a chance to like be close to anybody. So I didn't, you know what I mean? Like I'm going off the fly trying to make it. That's right. That's right. Shout out to BD, man, doing his thing out here, man. A real one, legend too. Yep. Cali King too. Don't yep. get it twisted. BD, yep. matter of fact, come on down, man. Oh yeah, for sure. Check I'm surprised he ain't come up here yet. For real. He, he oh yeah, man. Through. We want to we want to get all the real players in yeah. there, man. So is it anybody from your family that inspired you, bro? My, both of my parents. Yeah. Yeah, my, my mom was a, Olympian track star, mm. you know what I mean? She got a chance to run in the 1984 Olympics. That's fire. Yeah, and you know, my dad as well, he did he did track and boxing, you know what okay. I'm saying? So like. So Pops was uh, out there fucking people up. <laughs> hey, yeah, Hell for sure. Yeah. Like That's why you got that that cool demeanor, <laughs> like don't play with me like nah, that. But like for them, it, they was just always hard on me. You yeah. know what I mean? Like my mom was more for like school. She was just like, you can't be on any team. 
Mm. You know what I mean? If you don't get your school right, mm. you know what I mean? There's times where like I can't go to practice, you know what I mean? Because if I do like homework and stuff, and like so I'll be in tears, ball, like you know playing ball guy, it had to, it was man, a privilege. Man, listen, the school That's had tight. their GPA, my family had their own GPA. That's <laughs> fire, so, bro. You know what I mean? Like I can't do nothing without that. And then my dad, like at the time, I didn't understand, but he used to like he was super hard on me. Like mm. he'll wake me up at like five o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm only like what the junior in high school every day just running oh and i'm like gosh. why are we running so early like you know i hate it like as soon as you came knocking on that door mm -hmm. like i was yeah. just like why we got to do all this and <laughs> it's like man boy get up you know what i'm saying and like you want to do this yeah and then i think i took a leap from there mm -hmm. like when i started doing like all the little extra work in the morning yeah. and like nobody else was doing it mm -hmm. and my dad was just like forcing me to do all that stuff i mean i think i just took off from there that's fire bro yeah. that's so fire man oh my gosh i still want to like talk about like your upbringing with um like who did you play for SCA or any of them type of teams? No man, I always played against them. Yeah, I see, because I when you them. was talking about the leagues and <laughs> I wanted to know what 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 team you played for. Yeah, I, I was uh at the time. Oh, it was it was RC Bulls. I don't know if you remember that. Man, but, you was on a team <laughs> like me. I ain't never heard of the RC exactly. Bulls. That Rancho Cucamonga oh, Bulls. Bulls man. Oh man, man. Let's see. Let's I was see. on the Linwood Dukes. Yeah, man. <laughs> we had Duke look. Blue Devils. <laughs> <laughs> we we ain't had no jersey. Oh shirts. my god, man. like we played against a lot of teams that had cool jerseys. We come in there with shirts. They had to tape our numbers in the back oh of our shirts. Oh my god, like, my yeah, boy! Y'all have my boy DC <laughs> playing shirts and skins, yeah, but hoping though no. <laughs> buckets. You already know. But buckets. that's what I, that's what I'm saying though. Like, so like, you know, I remember when I played for RC Bulls, they would go down to the inner city, mm -hmm. and I'm talking about like where. Mm -hmm. RC Bulls, you know, obviously it's red. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like, some of the schools that we would play at, mm -hmm. you know, our coach is like, you better put a shirt over it, yeah. you know, before the game starts. <laughs> oh or, like, when gosh. you walk, it was so hood, like, before we played. But, like, that helped me as a, you know, player and a person, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because I got a chance to see that the guys that we were playing against, they come from different backgrounds. Serious ones. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, like, a lot of them were talented. Mm -hmm. A lot of them played hard, but you didn't understand why at that age. Mm -hmm. But then when you actually go through that environment, yeah. it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? For me, bro, it was like, it was it was our escape route. For sure. Like for me, that's the main reason why I played because I didn't want to be kicking it with these dudes that's down the street because all I'm seeing is, is seven of y'all when I first moved over here. Yeah. Now that I start going to this school, half the semester is over, it's four of y'all now. Yeah. So it's just like, hell no, y'all ain't going to recruit me. I'm about to go. <laughs> get recruited and be on we, this team we had no idea we just playing against y'all y'all just playing with so much fire and passion I mean, ball is your way up yeah what ball yeah. Is, what is it ball is life uh -huh. you feel what i'm saying yeah. what about you man tell us about your uh athletic career <laughs> oh man this is the Josh this time. Time. that's all yeah. good <laughs> no i was wondering though what other sports did you play was it all ball all the time uh, i mean your parents were athletes track obviously basketball yeah. Uh, I did a little bit of everything, baseball. Hmm. You know, I even did okay. karate for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it was Nothing just ma it basketball. was just mainly basketball. Basketball yeah. for me because it was like I don't know. I think they still do it for AU, but we used to play like three, four games a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And that kind of like made me gravitate towards the sport because it was like it was it was always live. We was always active. Those are the best days. Yep. I remember Pangos. Pangos, oh my Dino. gosh, yes. Fucking yes. Dino, yes. Pangos. I love, hey, shout out to you, Dino. He put me in the top 40, man. <laughs> Did he? You got me a look, <laughs> man. Up, you man. know what I'm saying? I was a junior. I got That's my state up. ring, you know. Then I went to senior year. It was like, you going to make top 40. <laughs> that's dope. But that made my whole shit right there. Yeah, it was dope. like, that was the moment like, bro, you coming in last doing suicides. They talking shit about you, but when you get in the game, you do your shit. For sure. You feel what I'm saying? So it was like all of that, like from Linwood High being called a traitor, like all of that shit. That moment, Dino, it felt like, fuck all that. Yeah. I'm in the top 40. Uh huh. You feel what I'm saying? And then it went from, I'm watching top 80, top 60. I'm like, it's a gang of people up yeah. here, bro. Like I'm amongst a gang of people. And to be top 40, thank you, Dino. You made me walk with an extra confidence in life. For sure. Yeah. For sure, for sure. You know what I mean? Lorenzo Mata. Yeah. Lorenzo Mata. That's my dog right there. Bro, Lorenzo. Hello. Lorenzo? Seven foot Hispanic out of Southgate, California, yeah. bro. Yeah. What? I threw this dude a lob from half court one time. 
Mm. Yeah. Boo! I was like, oh yeah, my god, yep. bro. He reminded me of Tyson Chandler. Yeah, okay. He definitely got that. He reminded me of Tyson Chandler, bro. Man, give me a lob uh, play that you threw to Lorenzo before. Man, plenty of them. We used to have plays <laughs> just to throw to him. You that's know what so I mean? hard. Yeah. Man, that's sure. fire, man. Yeah. So tell me how important it is. Well, tell the kids, bro, how important it is to like stay with school, like because you can make a left turn and it's the wrong turn. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it sounds like it was really important and drilled into you by your parents. Man, because it, it sounds so cliche where you tell a kid like, do good in school. Like mm -hmm. you gotta do good in school. But to be honest, like you know, well, my I have a son now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And there's a lot of things that come behind school, right? Mm -hmm. There's there's discipline. You got to learn how to be disciplined. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You know, waking up on time to get somewhere. It just prepares you for that, right? So it's not just about school. Mm -hmm. It's about preparing you for life in general, right? Right? You know, you got a lot of other, you know, classmates, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to network in life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you just being focused and, you know, having that positive mindset to do well in school is just going to prepare you well in life. You know what I mean? And I always tell my kids, like, you know, basketball is not the end of be all, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, just because you don't make it to the NBA doesn't mean you ain't successful. Right. You know what I'm saying? Successful to me is being able to, you know, provide Straight for up. your family. Mm -hmm. Period. Straight Period, Straight right? So, so it just it just all goes hand in hand. I agree with that, man, because I was, like, telling you a knucklehead. I didn't really care about the, like, academics part, and I should have, but I got a kid myself. So it's like my son, what I do in that aspect is tell him like, look, don't be like me. Yeah, I didn't care about class, like you know what I mean. But what I can show you, what we done is, your name is on this banner mm -hmm. in this school right here, three times. Yeah, we go to this mirror on the side of the school. These, this is your pops. This is your uncle That's right dope. here. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So by me introducing him to everybody that I know, and my journey of sports is making him know like, I want to be that part. Yep. But then I want to prove to him that I could be smart as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. Already his favorite subject, bro, is math. That's and dope. Bro, Man, you already, that's dope. I'm tapping out on math. Yeah. Algebra, and it, and I was to, done. But to your point, though, it, it, like, it helps you with perseverance, right? Straight like, up. When something is like challenging and it's hard, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like you can either fold or you could just try to figure it out, right? Right. But like that's life in general. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? When, when things get tough, you could just either fold or try to figure things out. So there's a lot of things that go behind school. I'm telling you, Josh. That's why when I took this role of sports, <laughs> mm -hmm. I knew. Because when you're an athlete, bro, what do you do? You play sports, and then what's your job after that you think you can do? You could be a sports commentator. Maybe. That's How many I of those jobs are there? I found one. You did. All right. <laughs> you found a... <laughs> no, but it's, uh, Shout know, out to all my guys in the back, man. You know, really there's a whole lot of you know, there's a whole lot of pieces to the businesses around these sports yeah. as well that people can obviously get into. But yeah, it's like you said, it's setting up to be able to be a productive person, knowing how to yeah. work with people. I think mm -hmm. it's a huge piece of school. Yeah. That, like, especially like you said, uh, you have a son. Uh, my kids, did they have to do any like uh, online distance learning the last couple of years or anything like that, like. Where they just weren't with other kids for the at first you yeah. know what i mean like a year ago at first you yeah, know yeah. I mean? and that was tough itself. and you saw yeah. such like a you know repercussions happen from that for like sure. there's so much important stuff no, that your kids real. being able to like just learning at an like early age that you got to work with everyone else around you for because, real you know mm -hmm. it's gonna make shit a whole lot easier for sure that's real shit. let me know about your feelings on draft day bro because mm -hmm. i wish <laughs> i would have made it to that point yeah. right there draft day <laughs> I still, I still get goosebumps just even like talking about it mm -hmm. you know every now and then you know i may just look at the video mm. i think drive day is such a, you know a special day because it's it, it's not only just making it to the nba but it's about all the work that you put mm -hmm. in to make it to that point right mm -hmm. and everybody that supported you you know what i'm saying and just to be able to hear your name called Cause you ain't just representing yourself, you know. You representing your family and your community bro, at that point. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is for me. When I see like y'all go to draft day, bro, it's like the most beautiful thing, fam. Man. Because you get dressed, your whole family is dressed, Man. and it's nothing but smiles and like love in the building, bro. Yeah. For people who worked for something, for sure. Not just somebody like okay, nah. They put in. This is their life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did nobody just pick this ball up two years ago and you got Man. it like this? And, and my story was a little bit different because, so obviously, you know, you have the green room, you know, right. 
and that's like the top 14 players. Mm -hmm. They can only sit in the green room, right? Mm. They only the top 14 players that's going to be lottery pick players, mm -hmm. predicted lottery pick players, mm -hmm. projected lottery pick players can mm -hmm. only sit in there. At that time, I wasn't even projected, you know, a first round player. Mm -hmm. I was like late first, early second, mm -hmm. right? And I remember um, my angel and mom, we were talking, it was like, well, what's the point of you going to the green room and stuff? I was like, man, I just want to get the whole experience. I just want to just sit down, just like kind of absorb it. Mm -hmm. We don't have to sit, you know, yeah. you know, next to the players. Obviously. Want, I'm I mean, here. You can't, I'm here. You can't, but like just to be like just around it. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm just a very appreciative of everything. So mm -hmm. when I sat there, I mean, my the, our draft was crazy because they <laughs> had picked like eight point guards like early. Mm -hmm. And these are like all the point guards mm -hmm. that was ahead of me. I still remember to this day all the point guards that was ahead of me. Mm -hmm. but Name a few of them so they know I who mean, we're Johnny about. Flynn, Ricky Rubio, mm -hmm. Ty Lawson, mm -hmm. Drew Holiday, mm -hmm. um, Tariq Evans, um, Steph, obviously. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, all these point guards, because they got picked early, that means I get to bump up. Mm -hmm. Right? And then mm -hmm. I just so happened to get the 21st pick and be right there in the green room, like, <laughs> as if we was there. And I was like, That's man, this is fire, crazy. Fire, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, man. So. Oh, my gosh, man. So, um, favorite team you played for? Um, I'm going to say home. You know what I mean? Uh, Clippers. You yeah. Know I mean? Yeah. Like, it was a, a great time. You know, playing for the Clippers, I got a chance to like be home yeah. with my folks and uh -huh. go to the games from there. But more importantly, you know, learning from you know Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, mm -hmm. had some really good veterans like Matt Barnes. You I know was gonna mean? say, bro, that's when I really like turned and was just like, you know what, he did it, bro. Yeah, like Darren did that appreciate shit. It. Like, like nah, for real, for real. Like on some other yeah, shit, bro. It. Like when you came home mm -hmm. and like, to me, bro, the Clippers is ass. <laughs> Like y'all was the turn Darius Miles in them, and then y'all, yeah, is the reasons why they are something to even think about For now sure. to me. And that's just being real, bro. Like, think about it. If I talk about you now from high school, and then you go to the Clippers, I like the Clippers now a little bit because yeah. you you feel what I'm saying. So yeah, it was yeah. like, this is crazy, bro. Blake Griffin too, Lob City. That's yeah. Shit is I mean, crazy. that was that was our whole motive. Like we was just like, look, like. You know, obviously they talking about the next team across right, the Lakers right. all the time. You know what I'm saying? Why can't we be that team mm -hmm. that they talk about in LA? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And why can't they? <laughs> Cause Darren ain't there no more, duh. You feel what I'm saying? You see how you try to set me on the We just talked about the Clippers last episode. That's why I only bring it up now. Huh? Yeah. You just <laughs> seem to be talking a lot more love about the Clippers now. That's cool, though. I mean, I got to respect my boy, bro. I don't want to sit here and talk about how the tickets is only $18, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this dude right here, man. <laughs> so um, is there any player, bro, that was in the league and he was just talking shit to you? Like, he thought he had your number and it was like, man. no. He thought he had my number. Mm-hmm. Not many players would talk trash to me. Because they knew like that. he had it was, it, was, nah, it was just like, yeah, I had enough respect where that situation would happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, of course, you got like the Patrick Beverly's, you know, that would say <laughs> something here and there. You know what I mean? But he just. That's him. It, that's just him. That's you just know him. What I mean? But not, I never really got into it with a player. You know what I'm saying? So. That's cool. That's cool, man. I heard a um, story on a, uh, YouTube. You was talking about you seen a fight on the bus and you like. You thought it was something serious, and then the old head told you, like, Ain't Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me about that. Tell me about <laughs> that. was that. actually on the plane. Oh, okay, okay. I can't name the players right now. Oh, I don't yeah, put them yeah. out there, but it was two players. <laughs> I mean, we all, they always playing like card games and it gets competitive. Whatever. Oh, okay, okay. And um, what do they play? A uh, Blu ray. And then they, 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 mm. they got into it bad. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And they was talking, talking, whatever. We were on the plane, too. And the next thing you know, they about to start fighting on the plane. Oh my God. Right? And I just, I remember it was D West. I'll give you that name. It was D oh West. Lord. That was my vet. He, oh he wasn't Lord. in the fight, but he was my vet that was like, the fight was happening in front of him. Mm. And he was just like, he was like on his laptop or something. And he wasn't <laughs> even paying attention. He was like, man, these kids, man. Yeah, like, they ain't gonna do nothing. Yeah, like, and so that was the story that I told, but shout out to D West, cause you know, that was, he was one of my best vets, but you know, he helped, he just made just everything just more calm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. With the situation. That's what's up, man. So who gave you, you would say, like a rough time guarding? You feel me? Who would, yeah. who would really give buckets, like, consistently, like, all the time you would see? 
that like me guarding them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Not saying you just you feel no, no, me. No, just saying sure. that they just nah, you like, know what real, I mean. Like I t like when people ask me this question, they all say like who was the toughest player to guard? Like you got to remember like we in the golden ages of point guards, mm -hmm. right? So there wasn't a particular point guard mm. that I could just name because every point guard can can go off. So mm. like a typical week, like if you play Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You might run into Steph Monday, mm -hmm. Russ Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You know, Friday, you may think you have a day off, but then you playing against Darren Fox, who also wow. can play well, right? The following week, you got to play Kyrie. You know what I'm saying? You know, Kyle Lowry, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Who people may not think is as good of a scorer, but, you know, he's still tough. I you like, know what I mean? I like how you put that because yeah, so we will like, not look at it like that, bro. Nah, because people, <sighs> yeah, like people want to give you just one name, but like, in, in the era that we in right now, every point guard is capable of giving you 20 to 30 points consistently on any given night. Mm -hmm. So, What was the um, workout? What was the worst workout? The college workouts or the NBA workouts? I say college. College? Yeah. Because you're trying to get there. Yeah, college, you just it's just more like passion and fire within the workouts and stuff. So, mm -hmm. You think the workouts changed a lot, though, between college and what you're doing now? I mean, your body changes, the way working out changes. Um, I don't know. I know, like, you know, with my training company at Pro's Vision, we do a lot of different things than uh -huh. a lot of training companies have done. So our workouts can be a little bit different, you know what I mean? Because we do a lot of interactive training where, like, mm -hmm. they just not training by themselves, you know what I mean? They're training against competition. Mm -hmm. Like, we have some, like, guys that's actually playing defense on them because I feel like, you know, you can work out by yourself, but... If it don't translate, it don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. I done seen dudes work out two, three times a day, and then they play in a game and give you two and three points. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So why is that, right? So I got into the training company because I wanted to see, like, how much we could translate, you know, the workouts to the games. And mm -hmm. for me, personally, you know, I felt like the best workouts is when you compete against somebody, you know what I mean, another player. Or oh, you yeah. compete against another trainer who's playing competitive defense on mm -hmm. you. So when you get to the games, you know, it's going to be downhill from there. That's true. That's true, man. Um, shout out to you doing that, too. Yeah, that was sure. actually my last question that I had. Like, could you let them know about the uh, Pro Vision camp that you're doing? Yeah, so Pro's Vision is, you know, a training company that, mm -hmm. you know, myself, you know, Sean Marshall, Paris Blackwell, Calvin Mitchell, we all came up with with a company where we want to kind of translate, you know, the workouts to the games at a much easier pace, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, we see a lot of trainers, you know, no disrespect, because I feel like all trainers do a good job, you know what I mean? But, you know, the thing that separates us is that we have guys that actually play the game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Guys that actually play the game at a high level, you know what I mean? It may not have to be at the NBA level, but professional overseas, mm -hmm. right? And for us to, you know, instill that into these kids now and kind of teach them early, mm -hmm. you know, so by the time they get to, like, you know, junior high, high school, they kind of already have, like, the fundamentals down pat. Right. Right, because of what we what we were taught. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so we've been doing this company for, like, the last, you know, two and a half, three years. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's, it's taken off, so, like, drastically. Yeah. You know, we had some of the, you know, the best players come through. You know, oh, got some really who, good work. Yeah, who, who comes Man, down? Jalen Green, mm -hmm. Big O, you know, Lonzo Ball, Zach Levine. Mm. Um Evan Mobley, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Devin Askew, you know, who's at Texas right now, Lamont Butler, who's at San Diego State, mm -hmm. Jalen Clark, Pay Payne Watson, who's who's at UCLA um, right now. Um, and then our top high school players right now too, you know what I'm saying? That's fire, so, bro. Yeah, man, it's, it's just been a dream come true for me because, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of like my own lane. You know, yeah. a lot of NBA players were only known for just being NBA players. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. when we retire, we walk away from the game, we're only known for just that. Yeah. So I kind of want to took on a, I kind of took on the challenge of just creating my own company, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, and see how far it would go, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's taking off. You liking it? I love it. That's you know what right, I mean? And, oh, and one other shout out that kind of helped us through is Ethica too. My okay. man Darius with Ethica has been instrumental into our development too with Pro's Vision. Shout out to Ethica. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't think Together we rise, something is wrong for with For sure. You. Straight up, man. For sure. Anything else you want to ask them? Nah. That sure. was dope. Hey, man, DC. Thank you so we much. appreciate you. We you always. 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 For sure, man. Always. All right. That interview, Darren Collison, legendary, legendary shit. Make sure you hit the comments below. Let us know what you thought. Let us know who else you might want us to see. He talked about bringing some people back with him. Ski talked about maybe going down there to play some one-on-one. -on -one. So 
coming soon. So, man, you just said yeah. that. I got to put my black and mild down. I <laughs> he gonna look at this interview back and be like, "Oh yeah, I got yeah, him. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. cook him." You smoke up. Yeah, yeah, Darren, I'm coming, man. He's gonna you be you coming. while he's smoking Pause. black and mild. Yeah, black mild hang out the side of your mouth. I you was just about to say I should play him <laughs> with a with a headband on. Yeah, and have a black just right there the Ooh. whole time. Just ah ah ah. Shout out to my boy Rome in the building. Coach Rome is in the building, y'all. I was we say, go tell ahead the people. Who we got with us? Hey, man, this is one of my buddies, good friend, good pal, good family member too. Y'all need to recognize that this man right here is such a blessing to the world. I had to bring him to the table just so he could let y'all know what's going on. Coach Rome in the building, and he's a fucking football fanatic. Let's go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you coming through, man. For real, Appreciate for real. Yeah, we bless. know we're going to do your thing, man. We know you're going to do your thing. So where are you coaching at right now so the viewers know what's going on? So right now I'm a head coach at a high school in Long Beach, Long Beach Millican High School. So okay. back in the city, able to give back to my city and to my community. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah, yeah. that's exactly you know what, what I mean? it's about. It's just giving back and helping that next generation you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Pour back into them. So, you know, we grew up so they don't grow up how we grew up. And right. They don't have to go through the obstacles that we went through. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's something going on around the corner everywhere. Come man. on, man. It's <laughs> something going on around the corner everywhere. So let us know about your, your uh, journey coming. Yeah, up, we were bro. talking a little bit earlier. You told you know, you didn't just end up a football coach. How'd you get here? Well, man, it's been a minute. Um, you know, I started at a young age again in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, my my path was a little different. Um, okay. Than a lot of the kids now, but you know, I grew up in gangs, and mm -hmm. I was blessed enough to be one of the only homies to make it out. And mm -hmm. I went to Washington State. Um, you know, I was. Doing Gotta drop that for you, bro, because yeah. like you mm -hmm. said, it ain't easy. It, it ain't, ain't easy. You know what I mean? I played D one ball there, and uh, you know, I ended up catching a case there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I started there as a sophomore, and mm -hmm. you know, and I was doing my thing. But caught a case, ended up going to Hampton in Virginia. Was there for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Came mm -hmm. out the lockout year. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Ended up. Signed in with Carolina in 2012, went to camp with the Panthers, got cut from there, ended up playing in Canada in the CFL with Calgary. That's fire, bro. Yeah. Yep, you just yep. dropped the gym on me. I didn't, man, I didn't know that about my boy. Man, man, man. Hey, man, I'm about to be out here letting him know. That. Man, my boy mm -hmm. Ron went there. Don't get it <laughs> twisted. Professional football player. Where in uh, the CFL were you playing? Calgary. Okay. Calgary. So Coldest on the West Coast. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. West hmm. Coast. Um, so I was there, ended up leaving there, and I played uh, – arena ball here they had the la kiss paul stanley gene simmons had a team oh out yeah. Here. yeah yeah mm. so i played there i broke my ankle had three surgeries and then i had another surgery on my shoulder Man. and that was it so i started coaching and then you know what i mean it, it was a way for me to stay close to the game mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know what i mean and it was also a way for me to again give back to the community and again because my path wasn't from here to here right you know what i mean i've been to jail seven times and mm -hmm. you know what i mean i didn't been through a lot of different shit. Mm -hmm. so it was a way for me to you know, especially in Lone Beach, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Compton, Lone Beach, watch those areas. Mm -hmm. There's not enough, you know, influence, male influence, you right. know what I mean? Positive role models. So for me, you know, when opportunity came, you know, presented itself, it's like, man, I got to go do that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Good. I'm going on my fourth year and shit, I'm changing a lot of lives, bro. That's right, man. Shout out to you for doing that, man, because we all go through something, man, going through them, coming up from the streets, like, Lone Beach, don't get it twisted, y'all. Like it's it's not like it's not easy to grow up there. Do not get it twisted. Like and for it's it's so many people that made it out of Lone Beach, bro. That superstars. Like I know I found out that uh, Snoop and Cameron Diaz had a class together. It's crazy. Lone Beach Poly business yeah. though. Like that's dope. Like yeah. that's fire, bro. Movies was shot at Poly. Yeah. Like then you got OT Genesis. Man, the, your boy. Yeah. Your boy. My dog. Don't get it twisted. Right. Big yeah. Hit him with it again. Hit him with it again. <laughs> I'm in a big league. Yeah. I'm in a big league. I'm in yes, a big sir. league. Yes, you feel what I'm saying? You Sorry it happened here, but you know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> Shout out to OT, man. It's just letting Shout you know, though, bro. Like, you see his buddy right here. They had a path. They were on a mission, bro. You got OT. I remember back in the day, he used to pull up dancing, getting it cracking. And that's cool because look where he at now. Yeah. Getting paid to get up there and see walk. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what is the seawall? Where we come from? Yeah. You feel that what I'm right saying? There, like that's that's the whole journey you just spoke about. Facts. Spoke about. So it's just like to see that man and then you on your football journey. It's just like, bro, y'all was focused at uh, young young players, you feel me? And 
that's the beauty of it, bro, to see that. Look where you at right here with us. Look where you at with the kids. Like, mm -hmm. you are helping, bro, and that's what it's all about, fam. So shout out to you and the journey from the motherfucking LBC. Yes, sir. Straight up like that. I mean, from coaching, what do you think the biggest difference is now? Like, what are you bringing as a coach that you didn't have as a player, you know, X amount of years ago, you wish you had, like, that insight you have that you're bringing to them now that you feel it makes you really good? I mean, the big thing has been the player's coach, and for me, mm -hmm. being able to relate to the kids, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Granted, I'm, I'm not like a dad, I'm like a big brother, you yeah. know what I mean? You know, before I used to post a lot of stuff on my social media, because I mean, I go pretty much a lot of places with OT and do all mm -hmm. that, so my kids kind of live through me, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? They mm -hmm. go to their parties, I go to the club, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They do what they do, I do what I do, yeah. but I can relate to them. We listen to the same music, you know what I mean? And, and I know like kids make mistakes, Mm -hmm. And I was that kid that made a lot of mistakes. And I got another opportunity and another opportunity and another opportunity. Mm -hmm. A lot of times these days, you have a lot of coaches that just give up on kids and not realize, like, those kids make mistakes. But the big thing is those coaches haven't gone through what those kids are going through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me so to be able relate? to relate to the kids, you know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's huge. You know what I mean? That's huge for the <laughs> No, it builds that trust with them, and I'm sure just like as a coach, then you're able to get through to them on so many different levels and get the most out of them, uh, you know, on the field, off the field, make them, you know, all around good guys. No, 100%. 100%. So, what's, what's up with your little brother? Yeah, uh, you were telling us a little bit about him before. <laughs> yeah, how you doing? Ryan good, man. Ryan good. He's a sophomore right now. Mm -hmm. um, he just picked up an offer from Michigan yesterday. They make number 40. So, uh, yeah, man, he's a... Uh, Michigan offer at a sophomore sophomore yeah and that's the 40th offer 40 yeah <laughs> yeah oh i mean he's, he's a special talent i mean that article is actually looking at something the other day an article came out he's like lightning in a bottle you know what i mean mm. um, you know every time he touched the ball there's a chance he's gonna score um but but with that that's why you have schools like alabama Georgia just won a national championship, LSU, Texas, Notre Dame, Ohio, like USC, big time schools going after this kid just because, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, of who he is and what he's doing. Bro, is is he talkative like you? Nah, not nah. like this. I mean he he he's done podcasts and stuff yeah. like that. I mean he's I mean he's the number one receiver in the state, so Lil Bro, pull on up. I was just gonna say <laughs> pull up, Lil Bro. Come through. Yeah. Let you could be the first youngster to lead the wave at no jumper sports sure. pull up little bro yeah come get let's it. go <laughs> let's go shout out to you and your journey man stay focused bro i know your big brother in your ear all the time i know he is but guess what it's all for a good cause because he's been there bro so check it out listen and stay focused bro focus on something you can't ski hey man i'm with all of that that's fire, bro. 40 offers as a sophomore. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, what the heck? I didn't even have 40 offers as a senior. Right. There's a lot of kids that don't, but it's, it's just something special going same. on up there right now. Um, I think in our program, we have like 95 scholarship offers right now, like mm -hmm. amongst the kids. Oh, wow. Um, you know, my first year or second year, we had a kid at UCLA. Mm -hmm. UCLA. We had a kid sign with Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, this next year, 2023 class, they're juniors now. I have about eight to ten kids signed scholarships the year after that. About eight to ten more kids signed scholarships. He's in A and R. Uh, yeah. What? Dr. Dre. He's <laughs> like blessing it. Like what? Come on, bro. Yeah. That's man. what's up, man. That's what's up, bro. <laughs> Wow. No, for real, for real. Because yeah. I don't got too many friends that can say they helped a kid get to college, bro. No. That's Come like, on now. That means so much more in a lot of ways. Getting them set up for life, potentially. Come on, you know, bro. Getting them an education, getting them potentially a chance to make it to the next level. 100%. I, I wasn't going to drop this, but yeah, Darren Collison just said Baron Davis was that person for him. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? To like right. help him out as not even nowhere near in the NBA yet. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? To yeah. where it's like the, it made him walk different, bro. Yeah, just like how to live life, how to like go about organizing all of it, separating how much time you have, you know, how serious you have to take everything you're doing. 
All right. Having that pro, having that person. Let's see how. Let, 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 let's see if he's ready for the opportunity. What you got for us, sports, right now? What you got for us to talk about on the sports? Uh, so while we were talking about high school, let's talk about NIL and how these kids getting that money right now. Yes. This is... <laughs> I've been want, I wanted to have this conversation when Ricky Williams came in the other day. Bro. And what he thought about it. Yeah, oh just about this gosh. whole system and the opportunity kids have now to actually make money. Yes. For the first time. Legally. 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 We'll exactly. say legally. Legally, exactly. This has been but yeah, tell I, I have a feeling a lot of the fans out there, a lot of people don't know about the NIL, don't understand that kids now in state, certain states can get played as athletes. Yeah. Before they're professionals. Yeah. So basically what it is, the rule changed to where high school athletes can get paid now. And he said five states. It, well, it's five states and mm -hmm. one state being California. Oh, yeah. Um, and what's crazy is a kid named Jordan or excuse me, Jaden Rashada. Mm -hmm. He's the number five quarterback in the country from up north mm -hmm. uh, from mm -hmm. Pittsburgh High School. He was the first one. Hmm. Um, I yeah. didn't know this. Yep. He got to deal with the air app. Hey, y'all, in the comments, man, I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Okay, yeah. come so on. So you got to deal with the air app. Um, that kind of, like, set it up for everybody else. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I, I know other people, and I can't mention names, but there's someone out here right now that's getting 200000 as a high school kid. What? And yeah. it's crazy. Like, it's it's a lot of money out here. We got to go back to high school. I was about to say, at this moment, <laughs> if you're one of our viewers... I'm about to help you get a bag. I'm going to train <laughs> me and Coach Rome. This is actually a much better idea than us going back to high school. Yeah. You feel going. what I'm saying? We're going to help you get this bag. I, you want you want some pythons? Mm -hmm. Me, Coach Rome, Josh, and No Jumper, we got you, man. Because uh, if we can help you get you a bag, y'all see Rome helping him Let's get to college. Get the bag. <laughs> Let's get it. Go ahead, bro. 100%. What? Yeah. 200 it's, yeah. bands? It's crazy because you obviously you have to be special. You have to be like one of the top players, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, in the country to do that. Um, but there's also, like, small players. You can get, like, 10 bands. Yeah. And, like, mm -hmm. somebody from Compton or from Long Beach, 10,000, that go a long way for a high school kid. Uh, man, I was just about to say, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, I'm, I'm about to get held back. I'm about to get <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And it's, I, I'll be in school right now. Like, man, I'm about to easy. kick it in the hallway. I'm about mm -hmm. to be the biggest hey, 15th grader up here, Come bro. On. <laughs> I'm going to be a millionaire before I walk out. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm getting held Who back Who are they getting these purpose? deals from? Um, it's just, it's well, you have NIL mm -hmm. agents, obviously. Right. Um, and the, the bigger you are, obviously, the more contacting you. Um, but you have other people who have like marketing teams who um, help them, you know, obviously the more followers, the better. Mm. Um, but you have like athletic brands, you have water companies, you have car dealerships, you have all kind of businesses that are willing to pay you to market my product. Mm. Essentially, mm. that's what it is. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I mean, they're getting a bag for it. They're oh. getting free product. They're getting free Water, whatever it is. You know I mean, they mean? should. I mean, that's the one way they can keep these kids incentivized because otherwise they can do it themselves and become YouTubers. They can look for their own brand deals and like exercise that part of their personality, but keeping them as an athlete, keeping them incentivized and motivated in this one lane mm -hmm. where you can also make the bag, it feels like it's kind of a draw for them. 100%. Kids are no cap. super active. I feel some type of way. I know they didn't have this. I feel right? some type of way because. I didn't play with the best of them, man. You didn't play with the best of them. Now, just the simple fact that we talking about this, I could have been a millionaire back then, bro. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you were like, wow, of bro. your stature, you were all-star. This is you been crazy. Been I never back. even thought about this, bro. How do you feel about that now that I just thought about it? <laughs> It sucked, bro. We could have been getting a crazy bag. I wouldn't have to be shooting dice. Man, I wouldn't have to be doing all imagine that the shit. dice you know games saying? we would have been pulling oh, up on. Shut down. 500 easy. What? Let's go. Shut. You know how much money mm. you would have made playing hockey? Oh, my God. Hey, question, coach. Because I, I pray. I, I know you, too. <laughs> <laughs> would you pull a Jawan Howard? I would. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. You get beat that bad, you're gonna you're gonna smash him in the face. Well, here's here's the thing. If a if, if a man puts his hands on me, yep, he deserved for me to put my hands on him. 
no matter how he does it. Hmm. No matter what. No matter how he does it. In a handshake hmm. line. In a handshake line. Because you, you, you have to understand that emotions right. are crazy yeah. after mm-hmm. a game like that. Yeah. And yeah. For a coach to call a timeout, you know what I mean, when you're up, you I mean it's kind of like a slap in the face. Hmm. And yeah. I can't I can't say it's wrong because I would have did the same thing as a Wisconsin coach. That's yeah, kind of they were pressing him. I mean, in that <laughs> moment, I, I, I would why wouldn't you? I would have did you the same I mean? thing. But in in return, if a, you know, I, I'm not I'm not there yet to where I can walk away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if somebody put his hands on me, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> Come here, man. Let me talk to you about whooping y'all ass right now. You know what I mean, and it's not good because when yeah. I go. My entire team's gonna go because I'm mm-hmm. the leader. Exactly. That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's, a, that's just that's the right. way it go. You have to have a lot of restraint to walk away from that. I was, be- I was gonna say on my input, I felt like Jawan Howard, man. I mean, I understand his heated situations, but we all have to understand like it's it's the we're we're not bigger than the program. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like you have thousands, millions of eyes watching on you, bro. You cannot be making those decisions. I know it's heated, bro. You know how many times I want to just slap the taste out of somebody, but I can't do it because I'm showing them I didn't overcome where I came from. You feel what I'm saying? So you always got to keep in mind, bro. Jawan Howard, you had some of the tightest shoes in the world, bro. To this day, people are buying them shoes. You know the ones that say Air? Yeah, Jawan Howard, come on, man. You and Pippin share those. I get it, but come on, bro. Goodness, bro, you are a fucking mogul out here. Don't do that. Sorry you made that decision, bro, but we just wanted to touch that topic. Josh, how do you feel, bro? How do I feel? I feel he was in the heat of the moment. That's a tough call to make, but also you're, what, a 50-year-old man in a with a bunch of college kids, right? True. (laughs) You're you're there to set an example, right? This isn't the NBA. This is, you know, this is college. This is education. Yeah. You know, the teaching moment. So him being suspended for the rest of the season kind of makes a lot of sense. And I'm. Hmm. Man. Because this is also not the first time he's had right, that, issues. That's either. another thing. It's he's not, a yeah. habitual line stepper. Whoa. So he got a history of fucking up. Well, just anger. Just like being too heated on the sidelines. And yeah, into man. It. Like, Come on, coach. Well, you Come have on, that. Coach. But. I also like how I said that I would have did the same thing. However, it should have happened immediately. Mm-hmm. So as soon as so once they push you back, don't try to do it then. Yeah, right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it should like it happen simultaneously. You yeah. know what I mean? Someone does do something, you get them off of you. Mm-hmm. Don't wait, and then. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because then you've got time to think about then, it. You, exactly. Other yeah. people are involved. 100%. Exactly. You antagonizing the situation, yes. being petty and shit. You want to sit back and reach through? No. As yeah. soon as they do it, do it. Don't poke the bear. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Hey, Josh, they how do you it. how do you feel about the um, playoffs on the East Coast with the basketball? Oh, things are tight right now. I was l- taking a look at it. I mean, the Sixers and the Nets had that huge move. It mm-hmm. looks like it's working yeah. out for everybody. Yeah. 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 Um, I was looking at it. I think there's like six teams that are all separated by like two and a half games it's like it's a tight race hmm. you got some you know people who thought the season was over for like the nets being yeah. like a legitimate threat right. at this point now that they got Kyrie's playing they got yep. their stuff together i got my celtics right there in the middle staying nice and quiet where nice where right where i like them no one's talking anything no expectations we'll see what happens come the stretch but uh no, the East is going to be tight. I mean, I think whoever you know comes out the East will probably end up winning this year. It's just they're going to have that battle-tested ability by the time the finals come. Of you know, hearing you say "I think," mm-hmm. that just made me think of my bookie, <laughs> my cookie, <laughs> my bookie. We're gonna start some pools going on, man. We're gonna we're gonna start uh, making some predictions on these games. Yes. So uh, we did definitely started talking about that. We uh, we'll have some picks ready for our next episode. We got March Madness coming up. Let's get it. Yeah, so I think do us doing some uh, right after Selection Sunday, us getting some maybe brackets going, maybe doing something with the fans. Maybe yeah. Maybe doing a no jumper bracket. Man, everyone... let's let's include the fans. Yeah, Are you guys gotta... ready? I think they ready. They probably over here. Push this, push the soundboard for us. I think we ready. Let y'all in, man. You keep hitting the wrong button. No, oh shit. <laughs> I ain't gonna do it to you. Question. Not this episode. What up? How Coach Rome do? 
Coach Ron, will you come back? I think having you to talk to from time to time here on some stuff, you're a good resource to you know a lot of the people that we're already fucking with, and you seem to be really tapped in with these kids and these athletes, and that's definitely the audience who, you know, we're trying to appease to. So we want you to be able to be a player's coach. We want you to be, be like, you know, a player's podcaster. Hey. <laughs> Yo, I'm with it. You know, hey. talk to them, Yo. talk their shit. <laughs> Welcome uh, aboard! Let's go, what man. What did you say? I'm in the big leagues? Let him do it. Let him do it. What did he say? It's up here. So Where we at the top now? Row. He right at the top row. Where we at now? I'm in a big league. I'm in a big league. And you Let's ain't go. never lied. Let's go. Thank you, man, for being so welcome, man. Man, yeah, we are sure. building a dream team here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to No Jumper Sports with Big Ski. Josh, and now we got Coach Rome in the building, and we go end it like that. Keep commenting, keep liking, and tell your cousin to subscribe now.